Alright, so welcome everyone to the sixth episode of uh, Graveyard of Tech One In, uh, where we drink tea and uh, write some Python uh, with occasional glimpse of PHP and uh, refactoring aside that's due for 20th anniversary uh, next year. And uh, if you've been here with me last time, um, we have uh, managed to migrate uh, the application from an uh, old server that died, died during the pandemic to Heroku. Uh, and by migrate, I mean uh, we've pushed and the application has been built and then we got an error. And the error was uh, caused after investigation by our RDS instance uh, not visible to the outer world. So that was something that I fixed earlier today. Um, I haven't, uh, uh, I haven't uh, had the guts to run the command last time, uh, the Terraform, because um, I've discovered that my backup is uh, database backup is not working correctly. Uh, so I have fixed that off screen since it uh, involved uh, changing credentials. Um, but uh, that is working now, and uh, actually, uh, if you would be interested, uh, up interested, updating RDS in place so it's public doesn't actually destroy the database, so that's good news. Uh, so yes, I, I can actually probably show the Terraform. Um, if you, uh, if, here it is. Uh, so what I what I did and what you need to do is that even if you have proper security groups on Amazon um, for your database, you still need to explicitly set uh, your RDS to be public and open to internet, even if it belongs to network groups uh, that are that are public. So um, if I will be able to look up the Terraform app here. Uh, so, uh, what needs to happen is that uh, for your uh, AWS DB instance, uh, which corresponds to RDS, the uh, publicly accessible has to be set to true, uh, together with proper security groups and sub subnets. So, um, if I go back to our code, uh, which is not available because I forgot to mount um, the computer that I'm working on. Uh, so let me do that. Um, so if I jump back, uh, what is now working uh, when I go to the production uh, website? It. Let me also actually look up the code correctly, uh, since for some reason that is not caching. Uh, but if uh, let me load it meanwhile, if you get to the new address uh, without HTTPS, since we are not paying for the certificates yet. Um, it will load, uh, but it will not load statics. And that's aligned with uh, what we've been debug debugging last time. Um, right, let me open graveyard. Uh, this is aligned with what we are, uh, what we were uh, discussing last time, that uh, the statics previously uh, were hosted locally on a different domain on the same server on the same disk. Um, and uh, this is uh, not possible on Heroku, uh, so we need to work around that. Um, that. Now I'm getting redirects that I haven't been getting a moment ago, uh, which I assume is related to one of my Zillion plugins, so let me try that in private window, uh, whether that will help. Um, there is a certain disconnect between uh, trying to have secure internet and being a developer. Uh, since uh, everything that I'm blocking normally um, often means that developing locally is not exactly uh, working well. Uh, so this is super slow and I assume it is because we're using the dynos uh, that are uh, the free dynos and what they do is that if you don't access the application for some time uh, then the dyno like the process is basically starting up on the background. 
uh, it should also be noted uh, that we are talking, um, we're potentially talking between clouds and availability zones uh, because uh, we are running our um, database instance on Amazon on, uh, on managed uh, RDS. Yet uh, Heroku is uh, it's using AWS as the underlying infrastructure but it doesn't guarantee you which availability zone you're on. So um, the latency between those two, between database and between Heroku, is not guaranteed. Um, so there is a pot potential for things to go uh, long. Not this long though. And also uh, if you see, um, the server actually responded reasonably quickly, like in 300 milliseconds. Not that it's fast, but it isn't this. So um, let's take a look just from Coral. Uh, from the con Coral is al uh, almost always the best way to see um, what's happening kind of down one layer when you want to exclude browser. Uh, so, um, if we take a look, look at curl and we do HTTP and not HTTPS and uh, we go directly after the redirect and we want to see both errors and um, the progress. So what this is doing is redirect uh, standard, error, standard error output to the standard output so we can both pipe it into less um, as a single um, as a single output and uh, we are actually getting 404 because I made a typo but without that we are actually getting a normal HTML so there shouldn't be any problem um, what we can also do is to redirect this to a test HTML page and uh, open it in a browser and see what happens. Um, so this opened on the other screen, but let me drag and drop it. So you can see that it's loading um, the test page forever, even though it's a static file uh, available on disk. And uh, my guess is that the reason for that is that it's blocked on loading the static uh, CSS files, slash script, slash, uh, you know, whatever else is blocking the loading. And, um, that is blocking from browser. That is blocking browser from doing um, anything useful. Uh, so let, let's open the code. If I manage to navigate to the folder, high chance I will be super sweaty today. Um, it's not the stress; it's the weather. It's super moist and super dry here. Uh, super moist and uh, super hot here today. Um, so, hello, Visual Studio. I mean, this is a very good turn based strategy, but um, I would like to eventually see some results. Huh. Yep, there we go. So, um, my guess is that the browser is stuck on uh, getting those style sheets. And uh, this is HTTPS A and B on the old server. So, uh, yeah, see that it loaded because um, 
the sheets timed out on the background. Uh, I think this is going to get blocked on uh, presumably on HTTPS not being available. Um, but just for fun, let's see. Okay, so browser is just connecting. What would curl do? Um, always the co good question to ask. Uh, curl is also just uh, trying. Okay. So, um, as I've been saying, there are two options to sort it out, sort this out. One is that we are uh, going to like reuse Heroku to solve static files for time being. Um, that's the easier solution. The, uh, the harder but more pro so like production ready solution uh, would be to build the static files uh, um, like uh, to have a basically static build pipeline, uh, put all the static files somewhere, uh, minify them, put hash in the names if needed, if we are going to invalidate quickly, and put them on content delivery network. Now, um, that is an infrastructure groundwork that we want to do at one point. Um, but last time we've been looking into this, uh, there was a... Um, uh, there was a package called white noise um, that is sorting out that proxying back for us uh, in a subfolder. So um, let me just check whether uh, there is a reasonable way to set this to subfolder. But if I remember correctly, it was uh, there was the static roots, yeah, st static root and. Um, static URL. So um, I'm saying let's take a look uh, at the white noise as a, a temporary solution and uh, you know serve it uh, serve it through um, serve it through the um, CD and proxy um, as a starter and uh, see where we will be able to go with that. Uh, just to get uh, just to get the site running, so we can actually work on you know some features <laughs> after a while. Um, so static root is using uh, static files uh, that should work for us. Um, so let's put it there. This, this should be right. Crap. Uh, this should be writable. Also, um, one of the things that uh, uh, this is using base there and base there, I assume, is the base directory of the uh, Python project. Let's see whether we have that. Diff yeah. So we have the defined, uh, but it's not available in that um, module. So we have to import it explicitly, I think. Uh, so from and since we are in the this is in the process of building settings, so we can't do Django conf settings because that would cause circular import. Um, but from base import, um, base there should work. Yeah. Capsule not working for some reason. Um, yes. So this should give us base there and static files, which is a folder. Uh, we are not having that is created automatic. Um, we don't do to use static uh, for most of the files. So let's make there. Um, yeah. 
So, uh, also of note, um, JIT doesn't have a notion of folders. It has only a notion of objects that had to contain data. So again, a way to add, uh, what do we have in static? Right, so in static we actually store, store statics, but static files, if I'm not mistaken, is um, where the, build, the static files are collected. So um, let me double check that. Let me double check that whether we are um, putting statics from there because yeah, we should. If not, we know where, where the mistake is. Um, so static files dot keep. Um, and that we had to add. Um, now that I'm working directly in master, uh, which is not advised in uh, multi-person environment and on, on features, but since we are uh, basically debugging production uh, that is down, and since we need to add uh, those, um, we, we, we need to add those, uh, test, test those things in production currently, because we don't have a robust pipeline, um, th this, this is why I'm doing that. And um, this is going to be on our subdomain currently. And without static files and without any Yeah, so this is the this would be the base URL. Um, we will then put um, uh, CD in front of it, um, but uh, let's verify this was let's follow the docs. So middleware, sure, um, that should go into the base settings because that's that should work on both production and dev. Um, Uh, let's double check that I put um, that I put white noise into requirements. I haven't, so that's kind of important bit. Um, And also, let's verify it locally afterwards. Uh, fast storage. Well, let's uh, let's start with that. So, uh, uh, we've been running on random port. Um, we have to be in the environment. And now if we go to eight thousand eight I was it right? Yep. Um we see it being served except for Farf icon, which is correct. Um here it is. So this is working well. Um, let's follow up on the production setting then. So yes, we exactly we want the forever caching behavior. So what this should do, I assume, is that um, Files are getting suffixes, uh, so they can be easily invalidated from uh, 
they, they are basically automatically invalidated from the browser cache. Like you don't have this problem when you uh, deploy a new version of your script and browser thinks it's the old version because uh, it remembers not to check for a new one. So given the HTML will now refer a completely new script, you don't, don't have to um, take care of that and you can uh, cache the old files indefinitely, uh, more or less. Um, so this should be all of it, if I understand it correctly, if you're not using CDN, so let's verify that. Um, So all of what's not included in the commit is not included correctly. Uh, so you swipe mice for static file saving. And um, last time we actually created a ticket for this. So uh, the ticket number is... 63 so we at least know what we've been doing and uh, let it do its job if I will remember my own password oh come on um, right I'm on a diff I'm using a different key. Um, they always say uh, use the use multiple passwords for multiple keys, but then um, you don't mark the keys by name, and you're fucked. Anyhow, so um, for the ticket, RDS backups are migrated. Uh, skeleton that corrects on Heroku is done. Uh, now we are doing the static files. Uh, also, as usual, we can have this um, circle window to know where we are at. Um, also in here, we do have logs from production where somebody's actually going, apparently. Um, and see whether uh, we're going to have some success after a build. I'm also quite sure that we have already been in the new UI, but uh, whatever. Um, so meanwhile, what's next? Uh, so I'm saying that figuring out uh, SSO is actually at the bottom because that's um, that's the payment part. Um, we will need to figure out sending emails. So also what we've been doing uh, when we had our, back when we had our own server <laughs> was that uh, we had a local mail daemon uh, that was sending emails to all users. Now. That in itself was problematic uh, because the modern mail delivery on internet uh, requires non-trivial amount of setup um, uh, in terms of uh, you know signing keys and crypto and uh, DMARC and verification and whatnot. Um, so those actually often ended uh, in a spam. Uh, so unless you want to do the uh, groundwork, it is actually useful to uh, use a third party service, uh, especially if you're not using uh, much, uh, you know, you're, you're not sending that many emails um, to have someone handle it for you. Um, there are options, uh, like either it can be completely as a service, um, well, which is potentially getting expensive uh, as you grow, or um, a little bit more complicated, but since I already have a AWS account, not by much, um, you can use uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon uh, like raw AWS to do that. Now, um, given I think this is still in the hobby range, uh, I would actually prefer to start with some someone handling that for me 
and uh, if it would get expensive, um, then we can just switch. Uh, but you know, it, it's it's worth iterating. Now, um, I had good experience with SendGrid. Um, I would take a look maybe um, whether there are alternatives. Uh, but uh, SendGrid served me well in the past. Um, let's check whether they haven't changed plans. Um, I'm mostly not particularly uh, attached to um, infrastructure providers um, for hobby projects. I mean, well, once you get into business, it gets different, but um, this should be fine. I don't see sale. Ah, here it is. I think so. 12k mails a month. That's uh, what? 400 emails a day, roughly. Yeah. That I think I should be fine with. If not, uh, we uh, like um, let's let's migrate for, uh, to queuing. Um, yeah, and we we shouldn't need the reputation and whatnot that much, hopefully. Um, okay, so... Let's see what Heroku writes on that. Oh. Uh. Marketplace, of course. Mm. Complete control of your email communications. What does that even mean? Um, mail gun. Technologically progressive businesses. I mean, we're not a business, so. Um, mail to webhook. That's cool, actually. Self email testing for staging and dev. I mean, it is production, although uh, at the volumes that a lot of people would disagree uh, is production. Um, but still. Okay, Sangrid it is. So let's install Sangrid meanwhile. And this should give us new configuration. Um, I assume this is uh, uh, this should add proper environment variables uh, on the background and without showing them to to you, hopefully. And uh, with that, we should be done. Yep. So uh, now we all just need to configure Django uh, to use those. Um, credentials but uh, first let's see whether we have successfully deployed um, so build succeeded according to locks um, so now if we go to the site in the private window that's not redirecting to HTTPS. Ah. Private window, I said. Voila. So there we go. And um, yeah, we are serving static files. We are uh, we are having the build uh, like the, the hashed versions uh, now it should be noted that this doesn't entirely work as um, as I've said before because uh, those files are built directly to the Heroku image pay attention to that so when we deploy a new version and those files are recomputed um, those uh, those files cease to be available but uh, since we are currently 
I would say in like death and testing, uh, we can get away with that. Um, but uh, of note, um, this is actually something that I should put a ticket for. Um, before uh, we really fix this. So um, let's say fix Terex files and uh, make a new issue. Um, uh, Serve from static files from CDM. Coach or Cisc history. So, so directly from the dino. And the possible candidate is called front uh, just because we have, uh, just because um, we are on AWS already. This has to be done by me um, since it definitely is an infrastructure. Um, and that is going to be a production launch. Oh, not really architecture, more like infrastructure. Yep. So let's do that later on. Um, what else had, uh, have we had there? Right. Uh, actually, same with SSL. Uh, and let's not call it figure out, but um, celebrate version by getting SSL. SSL and the beer. I'm getting that one for this. Um, all right, uh, so let me remove this one. Uh, Janko Heroku. I think he actually merged uh, last time. I just haven't brought it here, but um, I think we don't even have it in settings now, right? Yeah. So that is done. Uh, so emails are all that's left. And I'm thinking what is a good way to test it out. Um. Because actually, uh, our rewrite, I th right, our the only place um, that we are sending email is actually um, password reset. Um, so let's take a look whether that works. Um, so let's finish. Uh, let's finish. And uh, great Haruku Django, uh, just because I don't want to inspect and show um, the config on the screen since it's contained secrets. Um, but ugh. but we should be able to get uh, uh, to to just basically copy paste. Like inspect environment variables exactly um, for API key and be done. Yep. Wait. Um, this is the send grids. Okay. 
this is exactly the value API key. What? Um, so this is not set in the environment variables. That's weird. Uh, let me check that. But nevertheless, um, at least those are going to production. So Do we do we want to launch the application even if the API key is unavailable? Probably yes, uh, but it's something to lock. Um, let me write it down uh, since you know, logging. We've, that's one thing that you can can onto so logging. Um, Send grid key unavailable. Um, I think that this is actually a separate segment um, that I haven't properly kickstarted yet. Uh, so let's do that. But my opinion always is um, like if you want to allow a silent start, uh, so you know, not setting the key, not meaning that you can't uh, look at the app. Always set an error because on production you can then um, very easily uh, start silently and uh, discover like on the discovery you're not sending uh, emails uh, way too much late. Uh, so uh, let me inspect off screen the available. environment variables and of course there is one um, it's called some grid username and I propose that given this uh, variable is not reused uh, I think that we can just put this into um, directly in the uh, proper settings keys so this should be able to send emails so um, 63 was it I hope uh, let me double check. Um, yep. Let me push it. And once it's done, uh, let's try resetting password and see whether we'll get an email. which we haven't done the link for yet actually um, so maybe let's do that uh, let's do that as a verification um, let's tentatively mark this as done but not the issue as done since we haven't verified uh, I always tend to only mark issues as done done like you know when I'm completely sure that uh, Hell is not breaking loose. So uh, I think that I had a ticket uh, for that actually. Uh, so let's look it up. Um, password reset, I guess. Yep. me do that oh and there was this jungle vulnerability 
tank, which um, can we upgrade jungle? Since we are now working against Sardius. Uh, that is a separate issue, but we're still running on 2.0.x, right? Yeah, so there was a vulnerability in um, Django vulnerability email that I think had something to do with Unicode. Wait, 2.0 or 3.0? Um, is this all? Django, uh, Django one dot one. That's not us. Um, also not to that. Oh, um, is it possible that they haven't done CVE? And I also think that it was actually this year, not last year. Truncator. Uh, hmm. Where is it? Let's try Google because it's be better at looking up this kind of thing. Um, I remember I received it using email catastrophic back. Sure, that's what not what. That's not what it was. I think because catastrophic backtracking. I mean, not nice, but. Um, not catastrophic whereas uh, the one I remember was account takeover hmm. uh, let's see whether it's reasonably recent in news if not um, I would say let's roll with it and try to upgrade So we are this was in March and was for two dot two. Uh, oh new governance model. That's either good news or bad news. February. I think it was February. Uh SQL injection on Oracle, that's not us. Um, string egg. No, this is aggregator that we haven't been using. Um, Three oh no 
security issue in December. That's more security issues than I would like to. Um, but at least it's transparent. And I mean, they have varying uh, difficulty. Yeah, this one. So, attacker who knows the email address associated with the Eukaryos account can craft an email address which is distinct, but ceases to be okay. So, right. Um, so, so uh, this wh what this does is that uh, this only works if you can craft an email on the same web server that the user is um, that is different in how it uses Unicode so I would actually say that this is Potentially, like this is hard to actually use, but can be ruled out. Um, and um, what we can do with the backport is um, try to do the transformation before. I'm using the algorithm that's in the Django. Um, okay, so first uh, let's do this in the branch finally properly. Uh, so I have the password resets branch. Um, use the Django user framework. Um, Django user framework to provide an URL and a template for actual password resets. Um, so uh, there should be a view for that if I remember correctly. Um, Someone reaching in Django no. Um, huh, no recommended way to do that now. Oh, password reset form. There we go. So. We do have custom user model actually, but for the purpose of password resets, um, given how, how we set it up, um, this should work. So let's create uh, a new view for that. Um, so let's start in URLs. Um, if I'm not, if I will not make a typo. And I will say it belongs under user. And um, um, a 
I'm thinking what are the proper uh, node servers, but let's do views uh, password assets and it's um, password reset and it's going to be in views uh, this is the more complicated login which is fine now Password reset uh, with request is the only thing we need, and we will return the um, password reset template. Let me just double check that I'm using underscore uh, and not dashes because I'm not, I'm not sure now. Um, right, but also we are using dashes, so dashes. Uh, so password resets.html and that in turn also extend public um, pub, uh, public since it doesn't require user to log in obviously uh, id is page uh, password reset let's store it i haven't hit any key so i do wonder what happened now uh, but it looks like it got cancelled. So let's try again. Uh, yeah. So password dash uh, reset HTML and it was in templates and user. So. Um, the page heading is going to be password reset uh, without any icon. There's going to be a form that is going to be sending uh, data through post. Um, and in here, we are going to do the form. Uh, which I would call password reset form for clarity and um, unsorted list for example just for trying it out see how it looks like um, this also means we need to create a link uh, to that site or like you want uh, so that's going to be in the overall public skeleton and we have it somewhere on the right side uh, if I'm not mistaken yeah, user not authenticated uh, I forgot my passwords um, and uh, link is going to be filled by templates. Uh, it's the URL templates. Um, I think that for the next webcast, I'm going to try to. Uh, use the um, cold remote um, visual cold remote because this is getting slower and slower uh, so this is um, password reset so uh, 
Are we running somewhere? Uh, not really. So let's uh, run server. Look into it. Um, this can go away, but here let's get. Uh, Oh, this is the anonymous version. I think that we can use a normal one. Um, let's have a separate window for uh, serial, which will need a dot nerf and b. We are running on eighty eighty. Uh, so we do have our new version. We apparently have a template typo. Um, yep, but auto complete. So, and this is not clickable, so I assume that the resolution of this hasn't went well, uh, or we haven't typed correctly. It's one of those days. Let me fix that with some tea. Uh, so the page is there. The page is there, we don't have the form. That is not entirely surprising, uh, given we haven't set the form in view. So let's do that. Um, so the name of the form is uh, password reset form. So that needs to be passed as a context uh, from the view. Uh, where we are cur currently passing the user profile. Uh, we don't have, so I wonder uh, how this page can e even be rendered, but whatever. So, this is the name of the form that you can pass as a form for the time being. The form is the one that Django advises. Um, so, password reset form. Um, that we need to import from somewhere. Is it Django.forms? Or Django Contrib out forms? I have no idea. Would um, would Django advice? No. I mean let's try Django com contrib out. See what happens. Nah. So from Django contrib out forms import password reset form. Sure. Sure. Um Yep, so this is his unordered list. Uh, let's fix the design later. And first see whether if in there um, we put in a submit button. So just do a break. Um, so input type is submit. Um, the value I would actually call it um, send an email with a link. Um, 
and we don't need to put in names since this is um, the only submit button there. So that's going to be received by Vue. Um, as we've seen previously, uh, so uh, what uh, Django pattern is is to check for um, request method. Uh, so what is uh, post. Well, actually, uh, let's do it the other way. If it's get, uh, then we're just initializing this form. Uh, if it's post, uh, then um, we are initializing the form with the post data. So request post, and uh, otherwise we return four o. Five, I think, is the bad method, and okay, this way. Um, so Uh, I'm not sure the bad request doesn't uh, respond with 400 instead of 405 but method, but um, that should work for the time being. Uh, so if we do the post, uh, then we need to lock up the user. The user based on the email uh, so that's get objects no we don't want to uh, get object or 404 uh, we actually want to try to get user um, with the user objects dot get and email is the form.email. Uh, note that if you would be doing this uh, like on your own, uh, pay attention to sanitize the user input. In this case, as far as I know, the Django um, uh, Django's in, input, uh, Django's form is taking care of that. Um, which uh, I mean, uh, we should do the form dot uh, clean form dot clean. I think it's been a while. Um, let me double check and get a T for that. So. Um, from handling with class-based views, that's what we have. So yes, we have a form. Um, so if Let's do it this way. So if form valid, this is a weird API. Um, let me double check the original. Also, this is Django 3. I hope it's same. Yeah, so form is valid. There is no else. There is no else because it will just bubble through the render and will contain error messages because we initialize with the request post. 
Um, so if the form is valid, this is where we are getting, um, trying to get the user, uh, catching, um, sorry, bad language, uh, catching user does not exist. Um, which we'll handle later. So in this case, uh, if we do an empty submit, um, which we can't because uh, this is using all the modern features. Crap. Well, never mind. Uh, so. Um, this will crash, and th but actually we are not interested in the variable anyway, but um, nah, and this is uh, let's use RF error. So no good way to test this error actually, unless we, um, uh, unless we manually construct the request, uh, also of note. Uh, I haven't put in a, a C CSRF token to the form, so that needs to be fixed. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's just putting in CSRF token tech. Yep. So it goes here. Um, let's reload. And, um, yep, not form valid because it was is valid, right? I've caused that, but I'm quite sure. Uh, So this is a place where, um, you know, considering getting more test is probably not a bad idea. So let's do it afterwards. Um, all right, so let me think whether there is a good way to test this without going full bone um, selenium on this which I don't want to for various reasons. Um. Yeah. Um. Also, what does the infrastructure look like? And this is not really about models. Um, this would require. This is where, this is where actually the fake view testing testing would be helpful. So, um, um, let's take a look whether Django still has that. Um, because that is a form of integration testing that would work. Oh, practical jingle testing. That sounds like something we may enjoy. Um, uh, 
Yep. So, um, let's do that because, like, whenever you see yourself making mistakes and like getting, uh, uh, do, 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 catch, catch yourself doing those cycles regularly, uh, that probably means that, you know, long term there is a problem and long term you're going to save cycles on this. So, um, I mean, the immediate reaction is the test password reset, but, um, I would actually say let's do test user and start with uh, password resets and then maybe uh, we'll need to reconsider. So um, yeah, we'll need to brief stuff do we have a fixture for uh, for a user we don't of course uh, we need the client um, we will need a user and a user profile um, now it's a question of whether to simplify things and go with user or do full blown, you know, user and user profile, um, the way we're creating it and, uh, having just the user, um, creates a non zero situation. So let's make our life more complicated. Um, so in models, we do have the user profile. Uh, I would say is it is. Let me check the helper functions that we're actually using from view. Um, yeah, we are using user profile, and we are migrating user, which uh, also creates the um, the user object. And um, apparently that is something that Visual Studio doesn't have migrated. Uh, so let's take a look. Okay, so we just we're just doing the user and linking it. No large magic. Okay. So let's create a valid user there then. Um, so it has to start with the profile. So self valid uh, profile would be user profile dot uh, objects that creates and what it contains it contains a lot of stuff I don't think that we actually have a registration for it so this is a proper can of worms um, Okay, I, I mean, let's try and see what happens if we only create user with fake nick. Uh, so integration test user, because we allow white spaces there and create the valid user We, we actually do have a more complicated registration workflow, but it's um, for a different session right now. So um, profile is valid profile and what were the other options? Username, password 
is all we need. Okay. Um, Let's set password into an attributes that may be handy. Um, so password is valid password and This also exposes the flow we have there um, because we are actually, I th we are using Nick as password and not email. Am I reading this correctly? Yeah, we are we are not using email as username. Uh, that is only stored in profile. So uh, let's do valid email. Oh, that's no text. I mean, um, that is stored uh, in the user profile in the legacy structure, and um, hence we have to actually alter how we've been doing uh, the view. So you see, value of writing tests. And it's of course not an article access test case, but uh, password reset. And uh, we are going to test sending the form. Um, and just to make sure. Uh, what? Just to make sure that we are doing the uh, setup correctly, let's run it like this. Um, so, project um, graveyard, we we'll need to be in the virtual environment, and um, we run test. I'm not sure I do have UI test set up. I, I don't. Uh, but it's running on CI and we don't need it here. So uh, also maybe let's only run uh, the integration tests. Uh, hello, autocomplete. Um, Right, because we don't have anything in the top level test, so the directory shouldn't actually exist. Exist. Um, this is in the dragon test directory, right? Uh, no, okay. Ah. Uh, test integration is in the test directory and uh, the DDC sets. Never mind. Too many projects. Um, Let's see whether it can read the path names correctly. Cool. So it ran the edit tests, uh, it ran ours. Uh, we haven't imported the user object. Um, so positive test failure. Um, 
Oh, profile is not a valid keyword argument. Uh, is it user profile? Oh, profile dot e what? All oh, right, um, user doesn't get a profile, profile gets user. It's the reverse search. Uh, so the other way. Um, let's first create the user. Uh, Nick uh, I think that you should be able to create this in this order. Uh, we'll see very soon. Right. Let's see where we're going with that. Um, and um, yes, just as I said, we are not uh, a profile available. What have I run it before saving it? I assume so. There we go. Uh, so we have a user and we have a profile, so now we can write the actual test. Uh, so uh, Let's look up that, uh, oh, from Jaco URLs reverse is what we will need for URLs. Uh, we do have a client ready. Um, so, Response is kind dot post. So response is kind dot post. And um, we are going to post it on the DDCZ password reset. And um, data is, I assume, the attribute. Um, let's see, this doesn't look like what I'm trying to do. Uh, kind of post, but uh, there was a get with data. Uh, I assume that's going, yeah. So the second argument is dictionary. Um, and in dictionary, uh, we are sending whatever the form produced. Uh, what was the form name, uh, which is usually something that's generated and prefixed. Um, so let's fix that. Uh, huh. Name, email, ID, ID, email, okay. So email is going to be a valid email. Um, and we are going to assume that 
the response should be should it be 200 mm. 200 or 202 because technically technically we are sending stuff on the background so, but keep it simple let's make it 200 um, so response dot code is 200 uh, this should fail because we are not sending the CSRF token. Uh, so let's see. Always test for failures first. Otherwise, you're going to be surprised. Um, so client is not defined, of course, because it's an instance at attribute. So self client. Let's do that. And um, cool. So we are in the same process as we were before, which is kind of suspicious because, as I am saying, we are not sending the SCRF token. So either it knows that you're in the client mode or it's not working. So uh, let me just Google. But given we have tested it and uh, the C CSRF production worked, um, I hope that this is solved based on some internal header, um, but it doesn't, uh, it's, um, there is a problem. Okay. So you want the, okay. So it's an attribute flag on request switch rocks is the middleware. I hope in a safe way. Okay, so uh, this is the test we wanted. Um, no, I don't want to save this page. Go away. So this is the this this is the test we wanted. Uh, this is encouraging. Uh, so. Let's fix the wheel. Um, and um, in here actually because we do have that email uh, we actually don't want to do the user we wanted to do the user profile uh, where email of the user is email now I'm wondering, um, this is actually something to check uh, for the future. Let me write the tickets. Um, it may be that the Django is relying on clean data. Uh, so like all emails being lowercase in the database. Uh, I am not sure that is the case for our data. Uh, so let's uh, let's create a ticket for that as well. Um, so verify that. Um, that uh, no, no, it's just there should all, all I mean yeah. I would love if there would be a create new issue on landing page because it's like 90% of why I go to repositories. Um, I know it's not GitHub's concern, but still. Uh, verify password reset works for old emails. Um, okay, 
this and this one on milk and growth. And growth infrastructure. Uh, so let me verify that. We can also clean the data, of course. Um, but um, I'm cautious of that. Uh, that one has to be on me um, because it is basically infrastructure ish. And uh, I should probably do that before we go with this as the only version. Uh, so it's all done to that thought. Uh, so once we have the user, and I mean if user profile does not exist, then um, if user profile doesn't exist, uh, then we are adding an error message. Well. Hmm. So there is a school of, school of thought that says uh, do not allow people to be able to use the password reset process uh, password reset process to discover whether an email is um, available. Yet uh, most websites actually allow you to do that through login. But now in our case, uh, we are only using um, nick uh, nicknames for login. So we may actually want to obfuscate it. And now that I think about it, um, when I look at the current sites, uh, I say that actually the password reset is also based on a nickname and not uh, email. Yep. So let's do that. Uh, so what we are going to, oh, but that uh, that means that we have to redo the password reset form. And it is also a good question. Should we have, like email is a secret in itself in this case. So, um, Do we want people to know that second secret? And I would say, let's let's start with that. Let's start with that and iterate um, if needed. So we have the profile based on email. Um, we and uh, if we got the user, that is valid. Then the form should send the email um, to that yeah, password change form. Uh, no, password reset form. That's different. Um, for fuck's sake, uh, I can call the news. Let us save some tabs. Um, cool, changing passwords. That's not where it was. Uh, I think it was send email, but I forgot what the attributes were. So um, let's Google it to be sure. Um,
Oh, there's even password reset to you. That I probably should have used. Um, although that relies on a user. So I need to take a break. Uh, so let's make a break here for, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, and continue with considering whether to subclass and reuse this view or uh, do everything on our own. So see you in uh, 15 minutes roughly. Uh, yeah, see ya.
welcome back um, as you can see this is my gu guidance for the next time uh, if you're actually working and don't reset your Mac for a while or a process um, even terminal can um, eat no trivial portion of our RAM anyhow so uh, where we have ended uh, was a decision on uh, what to do with the view because what I'm basically doing now is uh, re-implementing the base view in Django um, that's <coughs> I mean uh, contributed view in Django uh, that does all the functionality uh, that I would like to have um, the problem is that the uh, the whole template is designed around using a uh, user only and and um, changing it to use a uh, user profile uh, may not work well um, there was I think a uh, note about being able to do that <coughs> that I have opened somewhere but uh, it's not here um, no so let's just google whether there isn't Excellent or something out, or whether we, you know, inspiration for another article. So Django um, custom user custom user model uh, password reset form, I guess. Um, This looks possible. Huh. Okay. So there is a potential uh, for us to customize. Um, so let's see. Okay, so let's see whether. Um, There is a way uh, to customize that particular thing. Uh, so password reset form is in Django called trip out forms. Is it indexed? No. So let's see whether. Uh, if we do G G V N V so G V N V Lip Django Country Out. That's what I've been looking at out and forms. Uh, 
and we've been looking at a password reset form. So that's one thing that we can do. So does send email to the form, contacts from email to email, email template name, that works. Uh, get users, okay. So, form that says save a link uh, and uh, we are able to send an email. I do wonder where is it sending the link, uh, uh, what is the model for sending though? Send mail, external context, um, where is the domain like My my problem is that um, in order for this to be secure, at least in my opinion, uh, the token needs to be properly saved and I'm wondering where is it saved and whether it's compatible with our user model. Because this uh, seems to me that it's relying on the one minus of the token generator, I mean. Okay. What is the default token generator? Oh, okay. Package. Um, hmm. So how do views look like? Can we reuse the whole view? Um, and the view was password reset to view, right? So, we can override class, okay, so we could also override the form class to be based on the neck instead. Um, Password context mixing, I assume, is the one that's the basis for all of this. And where is it coming from? And okay, so it's just uh, getting the different context. Hmm. So I'm unfortunately I'm actually saying probably like never try to be special. Uh, but the, in this case, as we're uh, re-implementing something that um, that has an existing uh, workflow, I would say that uh, in this case it makes sense for us to um, re-implement and uh, but but use the lower level uh, build functions uh, like build blocks from Django. So uh, let's use the form, uh, but let's not use the complete views since they're tied to the 
like um, username being an email that you're that you're not doing. Um, this doesn't account for email being on the um, on the profile class, uh, which I mean, we could get around and uh, we could just make sure that uh, those two tables are always in sync. Uh, but this data duplication without, where like part of the, like, uh, I don't mind data duplication as long as it's known uh, what is the primary source. And in this case, different parts of the ecosystem, different parts of the application would use um, different table as a default data source, uh, which no. So going back to our original problem, so let's do the password reset form. Um, actually, if we take a look at the password reset form, I, I what, what I like to reuse is this um, sending email and sending users because that is actually potentially tricky. Um, it look it only looks simple usually. So let me think. Yeah, uh, it will make the Nick look up more complicated, but um it afterwards so what this is saying is that if we do form dot save um, in our password resets um, If we do form.save and um, what were the options? Oh, yes. Have I said how, how this uh, smaller ring and though makes things a bit more complicated? It does. So, uh, let's keep the template names and see what's going, uh, the result going to be. Token generator we can keep from email. Um, right from email is using, uh, from email is settings that we haven't set. Uh, so we should. Um, also speaking of, I'm not sure this is actually implemented either, but um, we should also be GDPR compliant and like allow people to opt out of our emails, even for password resets, because it's, uh, it's potentially spammy. Um, Um, write the site framework that we also potentially need to take a look into. Um, but otherwise it looked like we don't have to actually set much. So um, from safe and in both of those, 
Um, we want to add a message um, which was the flash message that I've been using somewhere and forgot again how to uh, how to edit of course um, so uh, I think we got it up. Uh, and say that you know if the user existed we have sent a framework oh sorry we have sent an, e sent an email um, which has a problem that um, if there was a problem talking to the email it was actually not sent and there is no way to know uh, but given that that's usually um, that's usually pretty uh, like it's basically a backend processing issue, and uh, it's something that we should know through the uh, Sentry framework um, rather than uh, letting the user knew about because I mean you know bad credentials or something like that is uh, or you know getting over the um, email rate limit. Uh, that that's usually what uh, what is the cause, and um, user can't do anything about it. Oh, so uh, okay. So uh, we've been we've done this before. Uh, so message dot success. Uh, so Django contrib. Right, uh, I'm already there. So let's go back. Uh, so in either case, it's uh, messages at message. What was it uh, request? Messages not su uppercase success. Um, uh, if the email is valid, uh, we've sent a password or a reset link. Okay, so let's see what um, the test does. So the test is doesn't have the email backend configured, um, so should use the dummy one. Password reset form has no attribute email, uh, right? Because it's um, cleaned data email. Let's try again. Uh, HTTP response has no attribute code, um, which is because it's, I think, called response code. So response code uh, okay let's look it up um, status code fair This is why you should program more often than once a quarter. <laughs> uh, especially if you're changing languages. All right.
right, so this of course um, doesn't say anything about uh, whether the message was sent. But that would require us to properly mock everything. So um, uh, let's try it on uh, localhost with an invalid email. Um, speaking of, let's actually log this attempt. Uh, so this should potentially be rate limited um, in the future. Uh, but for time being, I'm saying um, let's get that view and I mean our view, not the out view. And when user that does not exist, um, the logging info uh, not sending reset email for not sending password resets for invalid email uh, form data not clean data because um, you know potentially invalid so there's potentially nothing there um, and uh, on the contra contrary uh, let's also and that I would, well, let's make it info as well. Um, and this is clean state indeed. Um, so if we do this now, Then we discover that we don't have logging um, set up, and but I remember we've been configuring it. Uh, let me just make sure that we can import logging, and we don't have to use the um, you know, some Django wrapper. Um, but I. Th think that it is, is the default default Python yeah it does um, so uh, let's use this uh, it's logger then. Um, and the reason for this is that ooh, um, the reason for this is so uh, we could potentially um, reconfigure everything per uh, per library. Now, if we refresh, then then we should get a message if we configured logging correctly. Um, hmm. Which I think we maybe only have done for production. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, and no, 
this and the base. Okay, so what have you configured there? Let me see what I think we've done well. Um, Right. So let's temporarily go to the bug and um, this is base. So let me actually overwrite it completely for local because um, we will also need uh, will want a different uh, different format because this is rebels as fuck um, which is I mean useful for production um, and for actually diagnosing uh, post uh, uh, like po post mortem problems <laughs> uh, but uh, locally that uh, this is a lot of noise potentially um, logging always starts simple um, so we have sent Yeah, not sending password reset for invalid email. Um, so now you know what I mean by verbose. Uh, so let's cut down on that formatter. All right. Uh, I mean, it is useful for tracing it down, uh, but I would say that for more normal development, um, Yeah, uh, let's cut on all of that. Uh, so, although actually, um, let's start with having simple logger. This should be able to give us something reasonable. Yep. Let's start with that. Okay, so um, not sending password reset. And then um, because this has pre-populated pre database, um, let's see whether this would work. Yep. Uh, so let's deploy this and um, see what it will send. Now, mind you, this will not fix the issue because the link is going to be in, uh, I think that uh, at least we will need to provide the, vi uh, the view uh, for the reset link. Um, but let's verify what is it sending. So, um, this I wouldn't do on non-testing production uh, because uh, it sends user to the black hole. Uh, but uh, you know we can abuse our fan status. Uh, so what was it? Say forty. Um, yeah, let's, um, let's do a normal pull request for this. We can look at it meanwhile. Um, so Let's collect password reset to kick off. Um, 
this is actually the uh, main reason why I'm doing this is actually verifying that uh, email is sending. So, uh, also 63. Um, but let's wait for that circle CI check first. Now, uh, meanwhile, I have also noticed uh, that there is uh, uncommitted uh, configuration. Oh, and we have forgot about the templates and about the test. So, good thing, good thing. Uh, Let's amend it. Force push that branch. And um, what was in those configurations? Oh, that was. Uh, huh. So this is what I have as a documentation behind for how um, this is how we have configured light on the old server uh, and that is actually irrelevant now uh, so let's drop it um, if I succeed with configuration of my NAS uh, then inspect up uh, if not uh, hopefully it will not be needed And the track, those I th think are SVG files for um, th those, I think, are the SVG files for uh, the um, well, what could basically be FF icon, like for the logo. Um, Let's look at them locally. Because that is one thing that we should provide since every browser is uh, looking into it. Um, I'm not sure what is my application of uh, choice for SVG. So um, something will happen, and seem it seems it's Chrome. Fair. I mean, um, the advantage of uh, my computer being so slow is that you really appreciate having the build pipeline elsewhere. Um, and you can do races. Um, so I have no idea why it takes so forever to load an SVG file though. If I would have run, uh, I would meanwhile, well actually let me call Slack speaking of. Um, but uh, SVG to FF icon is what we want to do with that. Oh, bunch of converters. Because as, as far as I know, um, Ico is bitmap helm. Yeah. Well, if we can do that, um, Yeah. 
Let's take a look what's the output. Uh, of course, I think that that SVG was created uh, by using some GIF or something like that. Um, so uh, this is very over converted file. Um, let's take a look how it, how it first. So meanwhile, in the production department, um, oh, uh, let's take a look at the pull request. That was the one. Actually, I've been missing. Um, Unless it got completely bogged down by this, and it did. So, um, wait is all I can do. Oh, I'm coming home. That it's not displaying anything anyway. Uh, I think that next time, really, the Visual Studio Remote is going to be my weapon of choice. Um, since I'm on MacBook Air and the other computer is actually powerful. Um, yes, let's first clip this Google Chrome thing. I mean, potentially yes, but could you please die first? Okay, but this got unlocked. Uh, so, um, the pull request is done. Cool. So let's just uh, double check the files. So link to password, URL, login logger, get crates empty form, uh, post crates a form that tries to send the link. Yeah, that's good. Um, so uh, just to make sure that we are not screwing up branches. Uh, so let me do um, push of the password resets to master and um, of course to origin. So this way we are still on our branch, but we have fast forward forwarded master to uh, to our branch. It should close the pull request, which you can see that it does. Um, it's just that um, state refresh works in mysterious ways on GitHub, which is common for single page apps. And um, With that, we can test on production uh, when deployed. Um, one thing that uh, this uh, Heroku thing is giving us is uh, that we should be able to check on our send grid and uh, on uh, our emails. So should we be able, like once this is deployed and we we'll send the email, we should see the blip, um, even without me, you know, necessarily checking uh, the email. Um, so. Uh, 
Right, and the, the way to go there is uh, this should give us the window with all the authentications needed. So, converting is still waiting. Cool. Um, let's try without going to a new tab. Well, not everything works all the time. Uh, let me try refresh. I do wonder whether this is again related to some of my blockers entirely possible. Um, but like, come on. Uh, well, let's wait for the belt. And um, should we be able to see this in locks? Uh, no, we will not because we are. We have set this to warning. Um, also of note. Uh, if we would be displaying this in logs, it's actually a GDPR violation because uh, email is per, per PII, it is personal uh, in the, the file information, so uh, we should obfuscate it in logs. Um, this makes debugging very impractical, <laughs> uh, but uh, Either we need to mention it in the PI handling uh, or obfuscate. So, up for the next tasks. So, uh, right, let me do this in the private window again. Um, new version deployed. Uh, so if we do test an example come oh I almost told that uh, we we said debug true but we haven't uh, it uh, just says error message um, but there was a CSRF problem. And uh, it says it may be cookie issue. So let me try Safari because it is true that I may have stringent requirements. But my guess is that it actually may be bad domain setting for the cookie. Um, there is also a common issue that um, the domain set to the cookie that says uh, uh, the token is not configured correctly. Yeah, so. Uh, one way to find out is to uh, take a look at what's going over the network. Um, yeah, um, make everything go in, see whether uh, in, in this password in particular, okay, so CRS of token path, oh, secure. So I think that the problem is that uh, the secure option means that it will only be set for HTTPS. Uh, so we are actually not uh, able to receive cookies. Uh, so Django secure cookie settings. 
Uh, let's see whether we are not overwriting that in uh, production, which I think we may be. Um, so, 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 so. Yep. Well, uh, actually, all of those are are going to be temp temporarily uh, insecure until uh, we enable SSL. And we have a ticket for that, uh, so let's reference it properly. And because this is actually a commit we want to go back to. Um, Sixty-five. Uh, not much to test on this, so let's pull, push it into master as well. Um, and refer to it in the ticket, so we really don't forget. Uh, here. Um, so post implement. Um, uh, and reverts uh, our commits and uh, switch. Server to HTTPS and um, also switch default domain to HTTPS and enable a redirect because this is actually important for SEO reasons as I've learned. I still consider it a bit ridiculous. Uh, from the perspective of accessibility, uh, because uh, as I've learned, um, if you have an older client, you, um, you may actually not be able to use HTTP servers uh, because they require um, no, they, they require ciphers uh, that may not be pres present on your uh, system. So actually, it's security versus accessibility. And uh, while you know, I do understand the need for security. Um, for a lot of sites, I'm 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 not sure whether the whether the trade-off is necessarily where it's a good idea to enforce it in a way it is, uh, which means. Uh, yeah, uh, which means. The, there is no option. Like everybody forces you to just use SSL, and you're cutting those people off, um, even if you're, you know, if it's just block. Um, nevertheless, I th think that we should be deploy. Well, no, we're waiting for the deploy, so it's in progress. Um, Hmm. Belt is in progress yet deployed. Interesting. Uh, nevertheless, um, let's try again. So if we do test, 
app this is secured uh, so let's send it to my public email and now I would love to go to the Singret. Uh, but I think don't think I'm able to. Uh, so let's pause my ghost story for a moment. And see whether it will help. Uh, this is a lot of single page applications. Well, A, I'm not sure why I'm getting JSON. Uh, B, I to wonder where the problem is. So let me try to remember my password for that email <laughs> um, and see whether it arrived and we could cross at least this one over. Um, one of the emails that I have been using, like set up before uh, my password manager times. Let me just take a look whether I um, haven't upgraded it already. Uh, which of course now suddenly also requires um, passwords, because why not? Um, so, managing passwords 101. Let me try one password that I have stored. Um, let me go off screen for a moment. Um, see whether biometry works this time. This is not the correct password. Whew. The interesting thing is that, um, uh, never mind. Okay. There's a lot of accounts associated uh, with uh, this site, so choosing in between them, not trivial. Um, but I have a funny feeling that I'm, uh, I will have to remember this one. Yep. Oh, so this is for a uh, longer debugging, apparently. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we have the functionality ready, so I will verify it independently. And um, I will 
will mark it as done. I will mark the ticket as done. If it works, if not, um, I'll see you about that uh, in the in the next season, uh, in the next episode. Um, this we have ready, and we sh should continue with the password reset. Then, so finishing the finishing the password workflow, so it's not hanging, and uh, going finally to those creative pages. So um, thanks for everyone who joined and um, see you next time. Cheerio.